A car windshield crack is going to happen from a rock chip at some point, so the question is, is that $10 kit just as good or even better than the kit that cost $300? Well, let's find out. We'll see just how good the low price repair kits stack up against a repair made by a professional windshield repair technician. Then we'll see which repair epoxies are stronger than glass. We'll also see which repair resin is the most scratch resistant. Finally, a professional windshield repair technician will grade each of the products. At a price of only $9, the least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Antwish. The repair only takes 20 minutes and no special tools required. They claim that their repair epoxy is five times stronger than glass. They claim you can repair chips and cracks, bullseye, spider webs, star shape, and nicks. Looking at before and after pictures, the repair should look as good as new when we're done. Made in China. I bought several kits for each brand just to make sure we have enough material for several repairs. The inner layer of a windshield is made of glass. The middle layer is made of plastic and the outer layer is the damaged glass that we'll be repairing. To test the repair products, I made 11 damaged areas on the windshield of one of my vehicles. Since I'm not a professional repair technician, I spent an entire day training myself using seven different repair kits. I used glass pieces that were damaged by a Dremel. A full day of practice really helped me become familiar with the functionality and the quality of each brand. So let's see how the Antwish performs on this damaged area of the windshield. Step one, clean the damaged area. Mount the seal to the windshield. Peel the backing off one side of the adhesive seal, then line up the hole and seal with pit. Press the seal to the glass. Pull backing from the top side of the adhesive seal. Line up the pedestal with the adhesive seal, making sure the tabs match up. Press the pedestal to the glass and run fingers around the pedestal to ensure a tight bond. Cut the tip off the resin container to open the stem. Add five or six drops into the pedestal. Press fit injector into the pedestal with a pin valve lined up with the tab. Hold plunger with one hand and pull the injector up with the other hand. Lock plunger by engaging lower notch in the plunger with spring clip. Allow the assembly to sit for 10 minutes. It's been right at 10 minutes. Remove the injector from the pedestal. Move plunger to its maximum position and put the injector back into the pedestal. Hold the injector with one hand and rotate the plunger releasing spring clip from the lower notch. Depress the plunger downward engaging the upper notch with the spring clip. Now let it sit for a minimum of 20 minutes. And it's been right at 20 minutes. Remove the pedestal from the glass. Loosen the outer edges of the pedestal with the safety razor. Slowly pull up on the pedestal until it's removed. Wipe and remove excess resin. Pit filling procedure. Slowly add resin to the pit. Place a curing film over the pit, holding the resin in the pit. I hired a professional windshield repair technician to make a repair later on. So let's leave the curing film in place until he arrives to inspect the repairs. The instructions call for placing the vehicle in direct sunlight, but I'll just go ahead and use a UV light for right now. At a price of $12 is this Rain-X brand. Rain-X claims that their resin makes windshields stronger than before. Good for round damage below one inch in diameter and cracks smaller than 12 inches in length. The Rain-X is made in Taiwan. Remove any loose glass by scraping over it with a razor blade. Affix the applicator to the windshield. Make sure the center ring is centered above the brake and the suction cups are firmly attached to the windshield. Screw the resin chamber into the center ring. Screw down the resin chamber, turning clockwise so that the rubber mouth is flat against the windshield. Squeeze three to six drops of repair resin into the resin chamber. Screw the pressure driver into the resin chamber to drive the resin into the brake. Tighten until the pressure driver is almost screwed all the way in. Check from inside the car to make sure that the rubber mouth has opened wide. Allow the repair resin time to be absorbed into the brake. It should take about four to six minutes. Unscrew and remove the pressure driver from the resin chamber to release any trapped air that's in the chamber. Reinsert the driver and screw down again to displace air remaining in the brake. Make sure that there are no bubbles inside the brake. After the air has been removed, turn the resin chamber and pressure driver together half a turn to the left. Remove the entire apparatus by lifting onto small tabs onto suction cups. Gently wipe away any excess repair resin. Add a drop of the repair resin onto the areas where the damage is still visible and cover with curing strips. And the rain neck still needs to cure, but it's looking really good so far. At a price of $13 is this JB Weld brand. Contains 0.75 milliliters of repair resin. It claims to repair up to an inch and a quarter diameter. Repairs a star, a half moon, bullseye, and a combination of all the above. Also includes a syringe, pedestal applicator, cleaning wipe, push pin, and cure strip. The JB Weld is made in USA. Compared to the instructions for the Antwish, the JB Weld's instructions are written in a way that's much more easy to follow. With that said, the steps for the entire process are virtually identical. And the quality of the JB Weld's adhesive pad does seem to offer better adhesion, but that's pretty subjective. The syringe for the JB Weld kit is larger and more air volume should offer an advantage. Following the instructions to a T and the repair took right at 35 minutes. And the JB Weld kit performed well, but there's still a small amount of visible damage. Also the price of $13 is this Permatex brand. Repairs bullseyes up to one and a quarter inches in diameter. The kit and includes a repair syringe and plunger, repair compound, adhesive disc, pedestal, curing strip, push pin, razor blade, alcohol toilet, and one instruction sheet. The Permatex is made in Taiwan. Just like the JB Weld kit, the Permatex repair kit offers just enough supplies to make one repair. And the quality of the kit seems just as good as the JB Weld kit. The kit instructions were very close to the same as the JB Welds. 
The instructions call for 10 minutes of suction followed by 20 minutes of compression with the syringe and pedestal. When it came time to remove the adhesive pad, the Permatex held together a lot better than the JB Weld adhesive pad. Definitely a lot better and I can hardly wait to see the finished result. At a price of $15 is this Union brand. Works on round damage, not more than one inch. It also repairs cracks up to 12 inches. It claims to have an advanced resin formula. The repair should take 20 to 30 minutes. Made in China. And the Union kit looks just like the Raynex kit, but there are definitely some differences. I'm not able to thread the pressure cylinder without first lifting the entire assembly away from the windshield by at least a quarter of an inch. The instructions also call for installing the pressure bar and then checking to make sure the resin has reached the damaged area. The pressure bar is supposed to work like a piston and force the resin into the repair area as the pressure bar is tightened. After adding six drops of resin, the resin was not forced into the damaged area of the glass by the pressure bar. Unfortunately, the entire assembly seems to be acting more like a funnel and not forcing the resin into the broken glass. After adding more resin and after a couple more attempts, the resin finally made its way to the broken glass. After several more attempts at removing and installing the pressure bar, the resin has finally settled into the damaged area, and the repair took about twice as long as the Rainex brand. The Union did help repair the damaged area, but the damage is still quite noticeable. At a price of $19 is this Athlon Tools brand. The UV light requires two AAA batteries, but the kit does not include the batteries. It also includes five curing strips and four containers of repair resin, two razor blades, instruction manual, and a repair device. It claims you can make a repair in only 10 minutes. Made in China. And the Athlon's repair instructions are pretty similar to the Rainex and the Union kits. Just like the Union kit, I'm not able to install the pressure cylinder without first lifting the repair assembly away from the windshield. After adding the repair resin and installing the pressure bar, the repair resin still hasn't made its way into the damaged glass. I'll go ahead and add some more repair resin. Just like the Union, the pressure bar does not seem to be adding pressure. Instead, it's just serving as a funnel. The repair resin has finally made its way to the repair area, but the pressure cylinder isn't making enough pressure to force the resin into the legs of the crack. There's still some damage to the repair area. The instructions are a little hard to follow, but they seem to indicate using a UV light for 10 minutes. However, the UV light shuts off about once per minute, so you'll have to power up the light about 10 times during the repair. After 10 minutes, the resin does seem fully cured. At a price of $319, the most expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Clear Shield. Unlike the other repair kits, the ClearShoe kit is used at over a thousand retail locations where they perform professional car windshield repairs, designed to provide long-term protection to prevent crack from reopening. The kit includes a really nice toolbox, repair bridge, extra O-rings, and end seals. It also includes 100 curing squares, 10 razor blades, a rechargeable drill, 20 drill bits, thin resin, and pit sealer. The Clear Shield is made in USA. Before we make the repair with the Clear Shield, let's compare the repair assemblies for the Rainex, Union, and Athlon. They all do look the same, but they're all different. With the Rainex, the resin chamber threads into the applicator without the resin chamber protruding outward. The legs have a larger diameter and they're also a lot stronger than the Union and the Athlon. And the resin chamber on the Union does not have enough threading and it protrudes out the bottom of the assembly when it begins to thread. And the resin chamber for the Athlon looks very close to the same as the Union's. Placing my finger over the end of the resin tube on the Rainex, as I threaded the pressure cylinder, I can feel a small amount of pressure pushing against my fingertip. As I unthread the pressure cylinder, it should create a vacuum. So let's see if the Rainex can make enough suction to lift this curing strip off the table. Unfortunately, the Rainex just isn't making enough suction to lift the curing strip. With the Union and the Athlon brands, I barely noticed any pressure building when I threaded the pressure cylinder all the way into the resin tube. Just like the Rainex, neither of those brands were able to lift the curing strip. The Clear Shield has two O-rings that form a tight seal acting as piston rings. I can feel quite a bit of pressure building when threading in the pressure cylinder. The clear shield also creates quite a bit of suction, which is exactly what's needed to remove air bubbles in the repair. It actually created enough suction to stick to my finger while overcoming its own weight. The clear shield also made very easy work of picking up the curing strip, and that's a pretty long crack that needs to be repaired. Drill the center of the chip. The purpose of this step is to open up the impact point to allow resin to enter the various parts of the chip. Use the rock chip repair drill. To drill, simply place your hands firmly on the windshield with the drill cradled in both hands. Start by drilling the center of the chip at an angle, then quickly adjust so that the drill is standing upright. Let the weight of the drill and the drill itself do the work. Stop when the drill is no longer making progress or just before you pop through the first layer of the windshield. And the drilled area definitely looks deep enough to allow the resin to flow into the damaged area. Make sure that both sides of the bridge are unscrewed so that the suction is the first part of the bridge to touch the windshield. Firmly press down the bridge and clamp down the suction. The bridge should now be stable. Screw down the balance pin until it touches the windshield. Then screw down a half turn further. Now screw down the piston in the same way, screwing a half turn further when it touches the windshield. Remove the piston, keeping the chamber secure against the glass. Add four to five drops of resin into the chamber or more for larger cracks. Slowly tighten the piston to begin injecting resin. 
When you start to feel pressure or see resin coming out the bottom of the chamber, stop. Let the pressure slowly push the resin into the cracks. If it appears you stop making progress, slowly loosen the piston when half turn. This will pull out some of the air in the chip. Then tighten the screw back to where it was and then a half turn more. The resin is definitely being pushed into the damaged area. Removing the bridge. Lay a cloth over the piston to avoid spray when the seal pops. Release the seal by unclamping the suction. Use your fingernails to lift the suction and pull the bridge off. Then using a cloth, wipe down any excess resin. After the chip is filled, a little hole from the drill called the pit will remain. Using the pit sealer, fill the hole with a tiny drop. Lay a curing film square over the top of the drop and gently press down with a finger to flatten the pit sealer. Ensure that there are no air bubbles under the plastic curing square. And the repair looks very good, but we still need to let the resin cure. Place the UV light over the chipped area. Let's sit for two minutes or until resin is hard. Let's go ahead and check out the work of a true windshield repair technician. The UV light, you've got a razor blade. So this will be your cover for your yep. pit filler. You got two O-rings. That looks nice. It looks just like the one I've got inside from the clear ship. One new o-rings this will be your pit filler okay and then this will be your resin and josh is first going to drill the center of the damaged area he personally prefers using a variable speed drill compared to the tiny drills that come with the repair kits like the one i used the full-size drill offers more control and the bit is less likely to walk josh has a piston centered directly over the repair area and the bridge is locked down and adjusted for the repair josh added right at eight drops of resin what we're going to do is we're going to start pressurizing until we feel it tighten up and then back it off real quick and that's kind of what starts sucking your air out now you can start to see it starting to work its way down in there see yeah. it pushing that one he also used a flame to heat up the glass which will help the resin flow into the repair a word of caution adding too much heat can definitely cause a lot more damage to the windshield so a hair dryer is a safer option for someone like myself who doesn't have much experience. And Josh has done a terrific job of pushing the resin into the entire damaged area, including the legs of the crack. After adding the pit filler, he allowed the pit filler to cure for several minutes before removing the cover. So like these, if you take it and you go like this across that hole, it'll just pull it out. So what we do is you go just on the other side of the hole, take it off, same thing, take it off, take it off. And then you wanna make sure you're flat and you just over until you quit hearing it. The final step is to clean up the repair and the repair looks amazing. Josh, we'll go ahead and start with the Athlon. Stickier than ours is after it dries, but that one did a good job. It's a professional. So, okay. Yeah. That's what I'll say. That one looks good. It's, and see how much harder it is to scrape off? Yeah. That's more like what ours feels like. See how it's flaking just like ours? That's, yep. It is, it's hard. We'll see how that's so stuck. That's what makes me nervous, so pull the pit. And see how it tried to pull it? So see how it started to pull it out? You can feel yep. that with that blade. It didn't stick, see how it's catching? Well, that one turned out good too. I don't dislike that one. Yeah, that one, that one was pretty soft. It come right off. How hate. hard was that epoxy? Was that hard? Is that one was that one was pretty tough. Pretty good stuff. Mm -hmm. Was it as hard as any others? I'm gonna say it was hard as hard as this one. Okay. So see, that's not very hard. It's just sticky. Yeah, it didn't it didn't do great. Josh has had a chance to get a feel for the hardness of the resins as well as the effectiveness of the repair kits, and I've asked him to rank the order of the repairs. So we're gonna give that one an A. And then I'm gonna say, I think I liked this one next, and then Rain X would be C. This one I'm gonna say is D, E. I'm gonna say just cause that did that, I'm gonna give this one, I guess if we're going in alphabetical order. So the biggest issue with the JB Weld is that it did not stay within the repair. About 24 hours ago, I created some test pieces using glass coasters and test tubes. All the products have had several hours to cure in direct sunlight. And the Ant's Wish outlasted the glass and the glass finally broke at 18 pounds. Just like the Ant's Wish, the Rain-X outlasted the glass. And the glass broke at about 21.4 pounds. And a JB Weld has more than enough strength to outlast the glass at 23.6 pounds. And a Permatex outlasted the glass. And the glass broke at 20.6 pounds. Unfortunately, the Union let go at 8.6 pounds. So that's less than half the strength of the other repair resins. And the Athlon Tools resin has even less strength than the Union brand at only 4.6 pounds. And the Clear Shield Pit Filler outlasted the glass at 12.5 pounds. So the Union and Athlon Tools were the only two brands that struggled on this test. About 24 hours ago, I also prepared another test piece. I applied the resins and covered each of the resins with the plastic curing film. They've had several of hours to cure in direct sunlight. So let's use the most hardness test to compare each of the resins. 
All the curing strips have been removed, and the number two pick easily scratched the ant's wish. And Arena's held up just fine to the number two pick. And the number three pick is harder than the number two, and it caused quite a bit of damage. And the JB Weld seems a little bit harder than the Ant's Wish, but it did experience some damage with the number two pick. And the Permatex outlasted the number two pick. And the number three pick did cause some damage to the Permatex. And the Union is very soft and experienced quite a bit of damage from the number two pick. Just like the Union, the Athlon is extremely soft and experienced a lot of damage from the number two pick. And the Clear Shield held up just fine to the number two pick, but the number three pick did cause some damage. So the hardest resins include the Rain-X, Permatex, and Clear Shield resins, which required a number three pick to cause scratches. So which repair kit is the best? And the Clear Shield kit is by far the best with an average finish at first place. However, at over $300, it is very expensive. Out of all the DIY kits, the Permatex seems like the best. The quality of the resin seems very good. I also like the Rain-X kit quite a bit. However, the tool for injecting the resin just doesn't seem to work very well. Another factor to consider is the number of repairs that can be made with just one kit. Approximately 10 repairs can be made with the Rain-X kit, making it a very good value. A big thank you to Josh for letting me film the repair. It's always a little nerve wracking to have someone looking over your shoulder. And if you have a camera pointed at you, it's even more nerve wracking. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.